This might be the first time you've ever heard or maybe even seen the term reverse ETL, but if you've ever been told that your report numbers don't look right or asked to manually upload a CSV, then I think you'll pretty quickly see the value of this concept. By definition, reverse ETL is the process of syncing data from a source of truth, like a data warehouse, directly to different business applications like a CRM, advertising platforms, or any other SaaS product. And while a normal ETL process moves data from sources to a central data warehouse, reverse ETL actually happens after that and instead is gonna use your warehouse as a source and then sync that new transform data directly into those different business applications for you. So in this video, I wanna help you better understand the power of this concept by breaking down first how we got here, discussing why it's so helpful, and then at the end, sharing some common use cases for it. The idea of reverse ETL actually isn't new, but the fact that there are tools dedicated to handling this process is. Before these tools existed, a common approach would be to kind of hack together some sort of custom script or maybe a mini application to sync data around as needed. But in that scenario, you're responsible for connecting with APIs, probably creating some sort of interface on your own. And then more importantly, you're responsible for actually maintaining that project and that code. A big problem with this is that it's often built by one, maybe two people who also then need to be available to fix it if something goes wrong. You also can't be sure that best practices were put in place during the development of that or if the documentation is up to date. But also, I mean, don't get me wrong, I think this type of project can actually be kind of fun to build at first, but the reality is it often becomes a headache in the long run. Another common approach is to try to mimic the numbers in another BI tool in the form of maybe a report or a dashboard. And I feel like so much of my early career was spent making tons of different reports that were just maybe barely different from each other in, in an effort really to just match maybe with a specific sales or accounting requests. Not only is it difficult to match these numbers exactly, but you're also asking your stakeholders to use a tool that they may not be used to. And it also often leaves you with a lot of unused or stale reports. Another approach to handling this is to use no code point to point tools. And I think a common example, at least I can think of here is something like Zapier. And I'm actually a huge fan of Zapier and it can be an awesome solution for small workloads or when you just wanna create maybe a one-off trigger. But the problem here is that the number of these syncs will quickly get out of hand as your needs grow, which makes all of these individual point to points kind of hard to manage. What we're talking about here is often referred to as the last mile of analytics, or you might also hear the term operational analytics. And nowadays tools like, let's say Census, along with others like HighTouch and Rudderstack have focused on optimizing just that specific part of the process. But the question still is, okay, so how do these new reverse ETL tools actually improve this thing? Tools like Census follow what's known as a hub and spoke approach. And this means that there's one single source, and usually that's your data warehouse, that's used for all outbound connections. And all business apps can pull directly from the same trusted underlying source, which avoids uh, you know, potential differences between the many point-to-point -point integrations. By sending transform data directly to the business applications, your users can stay in their native tool where they're likely way more comfortable with the layout as opposed to you know, a BI tool. So no need to go to another tool or depend on additional processes that might have a bit of a learning curve. Not only is this nice for the end users for the reasons we just covered, but it also makes life easier for us as a data team. All API connections are built into the tool and we don't need to worry about building or maintaining custom code internally. The interfaces of these tools are also designed to be very user-friendly and you can add further logic customization if you need through simple SQL statements. They're also purposely designed to integrate with other tools in your data stack. For example, Census can integrate directly with your DBT models, which makes it even easier to maintain. Now to drive this home, let's talk about a few simple use cases to help you better understand how this works in real life. So tools like Salesforce come equipped with some pretty nice out of the box reporting solutions and is usually where your sales team is gonna spend most of their time. You'll still extract and load raw Salesforce data into your warehouse, combine it with other company data and create custom metrics during your normal ELT or ETL pipeline. But then you can use a reverse ETL tool to sync that new customized data and custom metrics back to Salesforce for the sales reps to create their own reports. They're still using the shared warehouse logic, but they don't need to go to a separate reporting tool just to see it. And they don't need to create their own custom columns 
to try to figure out whatever it is they need. Let's say your marketing team wants you to send them a CSV of all customers who fit a certain criteria. Rather than writing a query, exporting the data, creating and manually emailing a CSV, you can instead have a sync built in one of these tools to automatically send a segmented list of customers from your warehouse to a Google Sheet spreadsheet or something like that for them to access however they need. Lastly, team communication is another great way to use reverse ETL tools. Whether for a sales team or for your internal data team, you can grab any data you want directly from the warehouse and have it automatically send to a Slack channel. I mean, we all spend uh, too much time there as it is, I'd say, so we might as well just send the information directly uh, to where we all are instead of in a report or in an email. Hopefully now you have a good understanding of reverse ETL and its place in the modern stack. I also wanna give a big thank you to Census for sponsoring today's video. I was already planning to create a video on this topic, but it's always great to partner with awesome companies like this uh, in the same space. And so I really appreciate the support from them. I do plan to do more videos on how to use Census specifically, so you can see some more of this stuff uh, in action. But for now, I've added a link in the description below for you to learn a little bit more about them. And thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you next week.